let's talk about 3D printers. So I'm currently building an electric motorcycle out of this KTM Duke Roland chassis just here. So at the minute I'm working on the battery and that means I'm 3D printing battery cell holders or spaces like these. Last night I was printing the fourth iteration of these battery cell holders. And this happened. So it seems like the perfect opportunity to explain what the pros and cons are of 3D printing. I think the best way to explain this is to show you the process from design to printing a part just like this. All 3D prints start out as a CAD drawing. I use Fusion 360, it's just my preference. It's then put into slicing software. This software turns a 3D image into code that the printer can read and that will follow to create the item. This is called G-Code. It's loaded on an SD card and loaded into the printer. The printer now needs to be set up, so we start by preheating the plate and nozzle. The build plate is cleaned just using water and then it needs to be levelled. This is done by dropping the nozzle down to its lowest setting and then lifting or raising the plate so it's a paper's width away from the nozzle. When all four corners are a paper's width away from the nozzle then the plate is levelled. A thin layer of PVA glue is then wiped over the build plate to add adhesion and then this is ready for printing. So it's not the quickest thing to set up, but probably the biggest time constraint involved with 3D printing is the time it takes to print something like this. This took 14 hours and a slightly more accurate and more complex design like the new V4 will take 19 hours to print. So a big downside is time, but the second downside is consistency. Failed prints are a big issue with 3D printing. And there's two main reasons why this happens. The first one is it becomes unstuck from the bed. This is when the adhesion between the product and the bed isn't great enough and it just moves, moves around and then you get a failed print. The second one is your printer settings aren't correct. So you get tassels or strings on the top of the actual item and then when the head moves around on the bed, it catches or snags and again, pulls the product off the actual bed. They're the main two reasons for failed prints. And that's why, making this iteration, I've tried to go for a much stronger material and I've also changed that infill percentage so it's a much stronger pin overall. We'll check back on this print tomorrow and see how it gets on overnight. has just gone terribly bad. It's obviously come off the printing bed overnight, jammed itself underneath and the extraction nozzle has just run all night. So that's an absolute nightmare. I think what we're going to do is go back to PLA so the weaker material but we'll make it solid. It'll take a bit longer to print and it'll be heavier but for a prototype it should work sufficiently. So we'll give that a go and see how that prints. It's now four days later and I've finally got all four of these printed. Let me show you what I changed. All the failed attempts started with these two, PETG, and you can see it started to curve on the bed. That meant the corners lifted up and then when the actual printer head moved across it just knocked the print off the bed and this happened overnight. So what I tried to do was increase the bed adhesion by increasing temperature and bonding. Tried it again, the same thing happened. So I then tried to move over to a different material, PLA, and as you can see, it started to wave and go thin on the corner. The same thing started to happen. And this causes all sorts of imperfections in size and quality because it's not quite stuck to the bed correctly. 
So that meant it wasn't the fault of the material, it was the either the printer itself or the design. So I went back to a black PETG material and what I did for this is I changed the build profile, I made it slightly less dense inside uh, so there wasn't so many hot spots in the actual print. That helped but the biggest difference was this, I did something called a brim. So this is when you print extra material around the outside edge. So you've got a much better contact patch to the actual bed. And this worked a tree. And all you do is when the print is finished, you then peel off this brim. So this is the extra material that helps it stick to the printer bed. And this is done and can be thrown away. Any excess little bits can just be taken off of a blade. I think it's time I put all this together. Shit, I've only just... Oh. Just realised I've printed an extra. <laughs> I just realised I printed an extra bottom left instead of a bottom top, so I've got two of the same part, and I'm missing the opposing side to this one. Oh well, back on the printer and it goes. Next issue is I tried to make a nice interlocking system so I could snap two together but because of the very very limited space on the actual plate um, the tolerances are too tight for 3D printing or my 3D printing so I'm gonna have to come up with a different clipping system to clip them together like what I've done on the side here but put an extra couple in the middle just to give it a bit of extra strength but for now they'll go together fine. I guess the upside of having to reprint the opposing side to this is I don't have to print it with these lugs on. I'll just take them off and print them without next time. And that's how these are going to work. They're going to hold all the cells in rows and I can connect them up with the strips to make my full battery, which will be twice the size of this. Next time, I'm going to make an aluminium case for all this to sit in. But first, I can't put all these to waste, so they're going to go up on the wall.